today's video, I'm going to be showing you a cornucopia that is extreme 3D built up off the nail. It comes all the way up. There's a pumpkin and an acorn squash, a tomato, and an ear corn, as well as just some leaves tucked in here and there to fill it out. I love making all of these things. You could certainly switch it up and make your favorite fruits and vegetables to fill it with instead of the ones I chose. I would recommend if you do switch them out to just make sure there's a nice variety of colors. Otherwise, I hope you guys love this design and I'll see you next time. Bye. We are going to begin with an overlay of a dark red, sort of a, almost a brick red acrylic in the background, something autumn-like, very Thanksgiving-y, just a really pretty dark background color. Think of it like a tablecloth, if you will. And make sure it's not a color that is an exact duplicate of something that you want to be inside your cornucopia. Then encapsulate it with a layer of clear acrylic. After it has been fully encapsulated, you can go ahead and file it in with whatever method is your favorite. I love to use my e-file for filing things into shape, both on practice nails and people's nails. Speeds up the process, and I think the results look very clean and very smooth. Once you are done with that, then you're going to want to take and create a little base of your cornucopia with a piece of aluminum foil. So you're going to pinch and, and press and fold it into the shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get a rough shape. Once you have the rough shape done, use something to roll it out to kind of smooth as many creases as you can. Then after that's done and it's fairly smooth, you're going to take one more piece of aluminum foil and go over the whole thing. That way, when you go to release it, that middle part can come out and then you can hopefully peel that outer, outer layer of aluminum foil out, at least the majority. This way it comes out much easier. So don't just do one ball of aluminum foil. Make sure you do have that second layer on top of it. it makes things so much easier. I can't even express it enough. After you have that done, you're going to take your color of acrylic that you're going to be using for your cornucopia and you're going to be sculpting a base. So instead of uh, just going right in with the little strips of, of acrylic to make kind of that woven pattern of the cornucopia, you want to just have a little layer of acrylic down so that if there's any gaps, it isn't a total opening and it makes everything a little bit stronger. Once you have that done, like I said, I'm using a glittery acrylic. Actually, maybe I didn't mention that. I'm using like a soft gold glitter acrylic. Beautiful, beautiful color. Then you're going to actually take and you're going to, on a nail form backing, make pieces of, I'm gonna call them acrylic rope just for the sake of having a term for it so that we all know what we're talking about. And you're going to set down a bead of the same color, that glittery gold acrylic, and you're going to keep pressing it out into this really long rope shape press it, kind of tuck and press on the sides so that it gets almost a 360, like a, like a circular rope shape. If you just sort of slide your brush under it on the sides, you'll get that instead of patting it. So use the tip of your brush just to go along the side. Once you're done, and or once it's cured enough that you can pick it up, you're going to want to gently pick up one end of it and press it onto the front of your cornucopia and then just start winding your cornucopia up around. If it breaks, if your rope breaks, no big deal. Just reattach it and keep going. And you're going to do this a bunch of times. So now that was the first one. Once you have the first one done, you kind of get a feel for how it goes. Just repeat the process. Keep going until you completely wind the acrylic rope all the way around your cornucopia. If you find acrylic to be extremely tedious, which trust me, I have that moment too, a faster, easier, probably more suggestible way to do this is to use 4D art gel. The reason I'm not using 4D art gel is because I don't have that many colors of it. I have white, black, pink, and green maybe. Maybe I have orange. I don't know. I don't have very many colors and I certainly did not have a cornucopia gold. And I knew that I had this color of acrylic that was just exactly what I was looking for. And as much as it is maybe a little tedious, this is a time when using the acrylic for this method is, is just fine. And it doesn't turn out looking perfect, but a cornucopia isn't perfect either, so it doesn't really bother me. And in general, I am an acrylic person. But if you are not an acrylic person, using 4D gel would be a fantastic choice as an alternative and one that I would certainly recommend doing. So once you have, and you pretty much have it wound all the way up, when you get to the last one, it does get a little bit tricky because you may not have as much to wrap it around, but try to get it to kind of wrap up into a point. Once that acrylic has been fully cured, as you saw, I could pull out that first piece of the cornucopia mold really easy. Just tug it and it comes right out of the center foil or the outer foil. The center foil comes out of the outer foil. And then with a tweezers, you get to pick out that inner foil. Not that easy, kind of tedious. Once you get the majority of it out though, just leave the stuff that's up in the back of the cornucopia. Nobody's ever gonna see it, it's not visible. You're going to fill in the mouth of your cornucopia anyway, so just make sure you pick enough of it out that it isn't going to interfere with the end design. And as long as it goes in a little bit, nobody's ever gonna see it. So that's a little bit of relief, I suppose. Now on a nail form backing again, we're going to be sculpting our pieces of our, our cornucopia filling. So. I wanted to have a variety of color just to keep it 
looking nice and, and vibrant and just give it some variety. So I went with a pumpkin, an acorn squash, a tomato, and corn. And you know, there's so many different things when I was looking at pictures, reference photos for my cornucopia and trying to decide what I wanted to do. I really wanted to do an eggplant. They have that beautiful, rich purple skin. And I was very tempted to do that. Uh, an apple, I almost did an apple, but then I thought, oh, I'm gonna do a tomato. I don't need an apple too. There's just very many, very, oh my goodness, English today. There's so many different choices that you could do. I think I saw one picture that had a banana in it, which I personally found to be a little strange, a tropical fruit and a cornucopia, but um, that would be an option. There are just so many different things that you could put in it, pears, a lot of pears I saw. And so have fun with it. Don't necessarily just do what I did. If you are going to do corn, I thought it looked fantastic to give it a little bit of a texture with a craft knife as you just saw me do. And then I'm going to brush over a secondary color on top of it to settle in to those little creases that you made with your craft knife. So uh, my favorite one, I think, out of what I made personally is the corn. It's got the leaves on it, which give it another color of two. It's got a little bit of corn texture to it. I really liked the corn. But otherwise, switch things out. Have fun with it. You almost always see pumpkins. Frequently, you see squash. I went with those two. They're pretty much, I would say, standard, standard choices. Make sure that you add some stems to anything that you feel like needs a stem. The pumpkin certainly has a fun little stem. I gave it a slight little swooshy, swooshy, swervy shape add a stem to your acorn squash too. Uh, the stem on my, uh, or the leaves on the, uh, I want to say apple and I know it's not apple, tomato. There we go. Oy. I did after it was done. And then for my corn, I'm going to add the base of it now. I will fill it out a little bit more once I go through and I add the husk or the leaves of my corn. So there we have that. And now we're going to fill in the back sides. So every single piece of fruit that you just sculpted, you're going to need to flip them over and sculpt everything you just did on the back of them too. Build them up. They need to look good from every single angle. The way this design is made is that it can be viewed from front, left, right, up, down, side to side, etc., And it's going to look like a filled cornucopia. There's not going to be one certain angle that you are supposed to look at it from. So kind of, you know, not everything bad can happen on the back because nobody's going to see it anyway. That's not the case. It is a little relieving when that is the case and it doesn't matter what the back looks like because no one's going to look at it. This will be viewed from all angles so make sure that it looks beautiful and vibrant from all angles. I'm going to add a second coat to the stem as well. Do the same thing for your little acorn squash starting out with the green again. If you wanted to on your acorn squash they have sometimes they have a little bit of a like a yellow or an orange shine to one side depending on how ripe the acorn squash is I actually have one on my kitchen counter right now that I have been neglecting to cook and it is almost completely orange so we'll have to see if that's still good now that I'm thinking about it I may have to check that when I get done with this voiceover and then we're going to do the corn repeat the same process you did for the like the corn texture on the back side add a nice layer of the yellow take your craft knife add horizontal and vertical cuts into it once you're done with those cuts, take a darker yellow or kind of an orange color, wash over the whole thing. It'll settle into those little creases that you made, giving that corn texture a bit more obvious vibrance. And then on a nail form backing to make the leaves, you're going to go with a bright green or a brightish green. You're going to sculpt one leaf, kind of let it set up for a second. Once you can slide your brush underneath it, right at that point where you can pick it up and it isn't going to rip, Place it on your corn and then wrap it around. Make sure it is still wet enough so that it will conform to the shape of the corn. And then after you have that one part done, sculpt a second leaf, same process, same color. Make a nice big wide leaf for the other side of your corn. You do want the front of the corn to be open as if somebody ripped off the front piece. And then after you have that next part done, you're going to slide it underneath just like so, pick it up wrap it around. You can do more of these if you want. You can do just two like I did, or you can make it where there's three or four of these corn, corn husks going around. It is up to you. I wanted to go with two just to kind of keep it simple, but if you want to fill it out a little more, nobody, uh, yeah, your style, your choice, your art, go for it. Add a second layer to your <laughs> tomato, not apple, and then add the little leaves on the top. Once you have all those pieces done, you can go ahead and assemble your cornucopia. I'm going to glue the actual basket cornucopia onto the nail. It did not want a nail glue. 
It is not a very flat shape on the bottom. It has that little bumpiness just like the rest of the cornucopia does. So the nail glue didn't have very much to hold on to. So before I go any further, I'm going to secure it to the nail with some clear acrylic so it doesn't uh, fall off at any point throughout this. Then with more nail glue, I'm going to go ahead and glue the rest of my pieces in place. Before you start gluing them down, pre-plan at least to an extent where you want them to be so that after you glue the first one in, you don't think, oh man, why did I put the the pumpkin there? I should have put the corn there or whatever the case may be. So at least have somewhat of an idea. You saw me hold my piece of corn up to try to decide where I wanted it. That was a case of making sure I wasn't going to put it in the wrong spot. I loved it across the tip. I thought it brightened up the whole design with the yellow and the brighter green right across the tip. And then I'm going to glue my little, I'm going to say apple again, oh my goodness, tomato into that last little opening, kind of blocking the view to the inside of the cornucopia. If you make it so you can't see in to the cornucopia, you could imagine that there is a whole bunch of more stuff in there that nobody can see, but it's there. You know, maybe that's where you put the bananas. I don't know. And then on your nail form backing again, we're going to be sculpting more leaves. This time I said more leaves, but there really weren't that many before. But we're going to be sculpting some leaves with green acrylic to be doing the, the little leaves to sort of fill in. So any place there's a gap, you're going to pick up these leaves and place them in. And you can make as many as you want or as few as you want. If you had enough fruits where it looked really full and you don't think there was a place to put any leaves, then skip this step altogether. If you need a lot of leaves, you may consider adding another fruit or vegetable so it didn't look too leafy. Oh, another fruit that I saw a lot of was grapes and grapes would be really pretty to add into as a, as another color. So we're going to add a couple more leaves in here. Make sure your leaves are different sizes. They don't all have to be exactly the same if you wanted to, especially if you were going to be having a bunch of leaves. You could even do a different, a couple different types of leaves. They could have some that are like an autumn leaf that have oranges and red tones in them. I went all with basically the same, almost pumpkin or, you know, squash looking leaf but you could, have, you could have some fun with it. So that's going to be my last one. Tuck it in kind of behind my squash. And then once that is done, depending on you know what kind of details you sculpt into your fruits, you may want to be adding a few details with acrylic paint. I'm going to be doing a little bit of outlining between the ropey sections of my cornucopia just to make sure that all of that sculpting really shows up nicely. Once that's done, then I'm going to do just a little bit of outlining here and there where I think it's necessary on the stems and the leaves on my different fruits a little bit between the different sections of the pumpkin and the squash just trying to keep it simple I don't want to overdo the outlines but I do like kind of how how vivid and vibrant it makes things to have just a little bit of outlining done on them I did do a lot of highlighting on my pumpkin and my squash with acrylic with a brighter shade of orange and a brighter shade of green. I don't feel like I need to do that if uh, or need to add more with paint. If you didn't do any highlighting with the acrylic, you may want to add some highlighting on them or some shading on them. One thing I did want to do is I brightened up my corn with a little bit of yellow spotting on the kernels. And then once that is done, if you look around and you're happy with it, apply some gel top coat over the background. Look at how beautiful that burgundy color looks once it gets shiny. It is so pretty. And then once you are done with that, you can apply either a gel glaze or a 3D glaze or matte top coat or whatever you want for your cornucopia and your fruit. I used a mix of some 3D glaze and some matte top coat just to give things different textures and some different sheens. I wanted to make sure that like my pumpkin and squash and tomato had a little bit of a shine to them. I think it makes them look a little bit more realistic since their skin has a slight shininess. And then this is done. I love it so much. I I just, I had so much fun being able to make the different types of fruits and it was a blast. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And if you do decide to make one yourself and you switch up the fruits in it, I would love to see what you do and I will see you guys next time. Bye.